So we got a good one here today. You'll notice it's already kind of taken apart. I had an issue with my camera here, so I got to restart the video. Thankfully, I didn't get too far. It's pretty simple. But uh, we're doing battery cables on a 99 to 01 style Ford F250, uh, basically all the way up through to the 550, anything with a 7.3. It's all going to be the same. Uh, if you have an 02 to 03 73 truck or a 6 liter truck, it is a little bit of a different animal. The wiring layout is different, so this process does not apply to you guys. You got to find another video about that. Um, the, the biggest thing to note is that they don't have a starter solenoid on the firewall like these older ones do. Um, this battery cable install process, I believe it's the same for the 94 to 7, 7 3 trucks as well. I haven't actually done cables on any of those trucks, so I can't verify that, but it should be pretty much the same. Um, but yeah, so basically uh, what we're doing here is we're installing the XDP kit. As you see, I already unboxed it and everything. Like I said, I had an issue with my camera. I had to restart the video. But this is what comes in the kit. So you get some zip ties with Christmas trees, and then you get your starter signal wire your positive to positive battery cable and then your positive to starter cable. Um, let me come over here. We've got battery terminals and then we've got battery terminal covers. Both the grounds, this is a complete kit. Um, one thing to note, you need to pay attention when you're ordering your uh, cables for what starter lug you need. This one on my particular truck, this is actually my truck here, uh, it is a stock style starter, so you need the 90 degree uh, battery terminal or battery terminal starter lug, I guess I should say. You need the 90 degree one for the stock starters. If you have a Indenso style or some sort of gear reduction starter, read what the manufacturer says if these will fit the stock uh, style cables. Most of them actually need a straight lug, not a bent lug like this. So if you're installing one of those starters, and you have stock cables you can bend the terminal straight that's fine or you can put a new terminal end on your cables but you need to make sure that it's straight for one of those gear reduction style starters now i know the xdp starter uh, i think the mean green uh, something else there's a bunch of them they're gear reduction style and they will work with this stock 90 degree lug but just make sure you read that and check what's underneath your truck before you go ordering cables so that you don't order this and then you got to try and straighten it out, break it, and then you got to have a warranty deal with XDP. Uh, but now that that's out of the way, there's a quick touch on the install. So, well, this is really the removal process. I have both the batteries pulled out. Uh, you don't really need to pull out the driver's side battery. It does give you a little more room to work in there, but you don't need to. Uh, the passenger side battery, however, you absolutely do need to pull it out. So I'll show you why. That's because if you look in here, you follow the positive wire. We've got a little junction here. It actually runs down in behind the battery up to the starter solenoid. Um, on this side, you don't have to, but it does give you a little more room. Uh, the only other thing that's different here than if you have a completely stock truck is I don't have the stock air box in here. Um, it's helpful to pull it out of the way just so you have a little more room to get at things. Uh, I actually have one on the shelf over there I can show you, but for right now, we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, yeah, so where was I with this? So in order to get the positive cable out, which is where I started doing, you need to Pull this little flappy mat here up out of the way, and then you have to pull your spare tire tools out if they're still there, and you got to pull your radiator support brackets off. There's an 8 mil bolt and an 8 mil bolt there for this side. Twist and pull. The rubber comes right off the alter the uh, the alternator, the radiator. Set that aside. This one, the bigger side, it has an 8 mil bolt here. Here, you got to peel this up. There's one there, and then this one goes underneath the coolant reservoir here. Pull all those out of the way, pull this up, set it somewhere safe, and then pop all these Christmas tree clips up out of here and you can get this guy right out of there. Now, you're going to come up over to the starter solenoid, if I can get a good look at it. This is something to pay attention to when you're ordering cables. 
this little rubber molded end here. Everybody thinks it's a big deal. It needs to have this, needs to have this. It does not. This doesn't matter at all whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. What this is, is just an injection molded piece of rubber for two separate wires. There's not a weird split in there, nothing like that. You don't got to worry about it. Uh, the only thing that you need to be concerned about when you're reinstalling the cables is that you see how this one lug is really clean here. It's because normally it has this little rubber hat on it, a uh, little rubber cap. So that is your constant hot. So this one is constant hot from the battery, it always has 12 volts to it. And this actually powers something in the truck. I can't remember where all the, uh, what this feeds to, but these need to be on the same lug as your constant hot. It doesn't matter what lug it's on, this is just a relay, it's a big switch. When you put it together, you can swap these two, just as long as this one is always with your constant hot, that's all that matters. You cannot screw it up because the signal wire is so small. Um, and again, it doesn't matter what way the voltage flows through this particular switch because all it is is just a big switch. So now that that's out of the way, these guys are 14 millimeters on my particular application. Uh, they are the original ones. Yours likely will be as well unless somebody's been in there messing around and, you know, 7.3s have gone through so many hands now, I wouldn't be surprised if it's been messed with. So you want to get these guys loosened off jimmy this guy out of here and then we can start taking it apart underneath so on the topic of electrical you got to remember to bring a charger for in my case your phone that you're recording on because you're taking the batteries out you can't just plug it in but if you forgot your charger like i did and you have a car charger but you don't have a car to plug it into positive negative this is how these guys work positive goes to the little nub on the end negative goes to the guys on the side Lights on, it's good to charge. <laughs> so I can't really show it, but you gotta go down under the truck after this and go up to your starter. It's real easy. All you gotta do is take the hot wire off of the starter solenoid and the starter signal wire off. And that is these nuts here. Don't lose these lock washers, they are important. Uh, so this one's for the starter lug. What size was this one again? I think this was a 15. And this guy is just a little 8 millimeter for the signal wire. Uh, make sure when you're putting this one back on, just snug. It doesn't need to be tight at all, just snug. You will strip these out or you'll rip the post out of the solenoid uh, if you put them on too tight. And then the next guy's screwed when he goes to take the starter out. He's got to cut the wire shorter and shorter and shorter every time because somebody over tightened this every time. Just This one just needs to be snug. This one needs to be kind of tight because this one's actually the power wire for the starter. Snug, tight remember that uh, so once you get those guys undone underneath and you come back to the truck and this guy should I might need both hands for it but it should pull right up unless this one's connected somewhere I can't see in there very good uh, I might have to crawl underneath and take a look see if there's a zip tie somewhere I didn't see one last time I was down there I feel like it's tied to the block or something somewhere. Hang on, let me crawl underneath. So I just wanted to point out something I noticed while I was down here. Yeah, the downpipe shouldn't move like that. It should be solid. <laughs> I was wondering why it was hitting this heat shield here. Uh, I guess that makes sense now. Whoever installed the... I didn't put this exhaust on this truck, but... I should have checked that downpipe bolt, I guess. Yeah, that, that would be why it's... Uh, well, that's probably that clunk I'm hearing too. It's hitting the transmission pan. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm fixing multiple problems today. Here we go. Look at that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is why I'm replacing mine. The lug broke off, and I just can't. I can't keep cutting it back anymore. Wire's too short. Uh, classic 7.3 fashion. It's oilier than shit down here. It's rust proofing, even though, you know, it's, it's already rusty. Actually, this side's not too bad. This side was it. That side's getting a little... Eh. Anyway, it's not too bad for a northern truck up here, I'll say, but back to the point of the story. So this is the signal wire. Uh, you can see I've had to make a repair of that one already, and this has been repaired a few times, but it feels like it is tied up somewhere in there, and I just can't quite see where it is. I can't feel it. 
I think it's probably tied to the cross member here somewhere, so I'll keep digging and then I'll get the camera back out. Okay, so there's the culprit right there. I forgot about this little hanger. So this is actually uh, what, so this is the battery negative to engine from the driver's side. And it is, it is loose, loose, loose. Wow. That might be part of what my hard starting issue was in the winter time. Um, but anyway, so this little bracket up here is what actually holds it in here. I forgot about this little guy. It's also where the battery negative goes, and I already pulled these down, but your trans cooler lines also mount up in here so they're not rubbing on the oil pan. Uh, so I gotta get a socket for that guy. It looks like it's a 15. Uh, pull the nut off of that, and then all this shit should just slide right off. Uh, now you'll look at the negative wire here. This also has a smaller wire. I gotta trace that one to figure out exactly where it goes, but. Uh, this is uh, this is what that small negative is for in the kit. So just in case you're wondering. So this is on the passenger side, or the, yeah, passenger side of the engine. Sorry, uh, just below. That's the tensioner right there, and that's the water pump. I think what I'm looking at there, nice and shiny. Yeah, that's the water pump. Uh, while you're down here, it's a good time to check everything. Looks like looks like I might be getting a front crank seal going. Maybe, unless that's antifreeze. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Um, there's a lot of everything under here. Oh no, that's antifreeze, okay. So something, something's starting to leak. Probably, the, probably that water pump gasket. I don't, I don't think it was sealed correctly when it was done. But uh, yeah, while you're down here too, another good thing to check is your oil pan. It's starting to look like that. Don't touch it, because then you're gonna poke a hole through it. Mine seems to be okay right now, but uh, yeah, so. You gotta take that nut off, and then all this guy, all this, all this jazz here should just pop right out. And then you're gonna have to reuse this bracket here. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have to figure out how to take these guys apart again. I don't remember, uh, but we'll we'll deal with that when we get to it. So yeah, so that should be like I say, 15 millimeter. Pull that nut off, and then all this shit should come right out. Okay, so what do I do with that nut? There it is. So this is basically the uh, ordeal you got going on down there. So. It's a nut or a bolt with a stud and a nut. So this bolts to the block and it actually holds the negative to the block. And then this guy clamps down on the bracket that holds the positive cable in. Now, this is why it might be a good idea for you to take the charger or cooler pipe out because it is quite tight in there. Uh, sometimes you can kind of just finagle them out, but in this case it is quite tight. I don't know if I can twist it and get it out. Uh, Maybe I can here. Huh? Oh, okay, what way is that going now? So that's going like that. So that means I need to. I need both hands, is what I need here, but bear with me, I'll get that guy out. Okay, so I ended up having to take the charger cooler tube out. It's not too bad to be able to take out, it's pretty easy. Um, so there's a the basic rundown. This is what it's going to look like underneath the truck. So you got your positive with that little hanger I was talking about earlier. And then you've got, there's your negative, and you've got this bolt. There's a nut for it too, but I didn't grab it. So it'll sit, if I can get this stuff to cooperate here. So it sits like this in the block. Ramrods up against this guy, this negative here. And then, other way around, so either way you get the point. Threads through there, goes the other way around. The, the nut head is inside of the bracket. So that's how it looks underneath the truck. Uh, and then you gotta pay close attention for your grounds. So this ground here comes from the engine up to the frame rail. It's pretty easy to chase. It's kind of hard to get at, and if your truck's oily like mine, it's messy. And then you come up to the top and this one just goes up into the fender. So the routing for that, there's that bolt right there. That's the one in the fender, obviously. And then if you look down from up here, that bolt right there, that guy there, that is where the, uh, the ground coming from the block to the frame goes. So ground's there and then down on the block right by the crank, you can't see the hole. 
from up here, uh, but it's pretty easy to see in the bottom side. And then it grounds up here as well. Oh, so that's the passenger side completely taken apart. Now, we just gotta get the negative off of the driver's side. I'm just replacing it because it came with the kit and I'm sick of these things sliding off and gotta keep finagling with them. Uh, so just follow your cable down and you will see, maybe, if you come down on this side of the charge air cooler, where does it disappear to? Comes up there. And it is this loomed guy right here. Uh, does it go down behind the steering box? I can't remember. I think it does. It does. Comes down underneath the water pump here somewhere, it feels like. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that on the camera. Uh, let's see, where is that? What am I looking at here? Uh, there is... It's not showing up on the camera, but it comes down. Sorry, that's because I'm in the wrong spot. It comes down under here somewhere. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it on the camera. Uh, yeah, I can't get it on the camera. Uh, okay, let me, let me finagle with it. I'll see if I can get it on the film here. Okay, so <clears throat> things have happened. It's a week later now. I was up all night the night before there. Got tired, I just went home, and then I went to work all week, now I'm here back again, so, uh, where did I leave off? So I was showing, trying to show where that negative cable was, um, yeah, maybe I might be forgetting something. Just a recap, I got the positive cable out, I showed all the, all that, and all the brackets and everything you gotta take loose. Uh, the only other thing I've done since then was I laid out my negatives, the short negatives anyways for the passenger side battery. So you got your one that goes up into the fender there, and then you got the one down here on the frame. Real easy to see. Uh, I did end up taking the charge air cooler tube out. That makes it a lot easier to just get in there and work around everything. That and the, couldn't actually get the positive up out through with the charge air cooler tube there, and it, you know what, it's easy enough just to take out. Just, uh, I, I took the one clamp off of the uh, boot here on the pressure side of the intercooler uh, it's just that one little clamp there 11 millimeter and then I left the boot up on top of there I find it's easier to leave the boot on the spider and take the boot off the intercooler uh, when you get everything lined up then you can see everything and it just seems to work a lot nicer uh, but anyways so got that guy taken out to take it out you got to pull the dipstick out otherwise you're gonna break the dipstick off and you got to take the uh, the pressure tube for the mass airflow well, MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure, not mass. Uh, so it just comes off there, little spring clamp. That's all that holds these guys on. Um, so yeah, so where is my stuff? So here's the old positive cable. So one thing I did with the new one, so this is the wire going down to the starter. There's the 90 lug, or the 45 lug, 90 lug, it's 45. I'm tired again today. Uh, so the XDP kit did not come with the molded rubber around the uh, cable like that and I wanted to be able to reuse the hanger for it. So all I did was I just run my knife down it, cut it off, put a couple hose clamps on it, left it over a week so that should do fine. It'll keep things from chafing on it and then I can reuse that bracket so that it's not just dangling and rubbing around. Uh, I did cut it off. If you want to reuse this cable, you can be a little more careful. I don't have any plans to reuse this. That's going to go straight to the scrapyard because it's copper and copper's worth money. Um, but yeah, so I just cut that guy off, reused it. Uh, so now I can just put the bracket back on. I got to remember which way it went. I'll have to look back on the old video. And then we can start routing everything. So you can kind of see down in there maybe right there that's actually where the uh, that little bolt I was talking about earlier that holds that bracket on that's where it goes so you can get at it from up top here uh, I ended up just getting at it from the bottom so yeah I'll uh, try and get this stuff mapped out and then we'll keep going okay so I've got the negatives in now for the passenger side they are quite long good thing 
we need that length. Uh, you can see down where they go now, I think, if I can get the camera in it. It goes right down there. So I got the body ground, uh, the frame ground, I should say, rather, uh, to the block. And I've got this guy up here. Now, these two will be tied together, something like that, onto the battery terminal. Uh, now you see that stud, so that's where that hanger goes. So I just checked back in the video. If you took yours off and you can't remember what orientation it goes, this is the starter lug side. That's how this bracket is supposed to go. So it's going to slide in, and then you're going to put the nut on this side of it. So I got mine sort of kind of rigged back up together here. Uh, I'm going to try and fish it down through. Uh, but before I do that, one other quick tip. If you don't want to run the wire more than once, because I know I sure don't, one thing you can do, which is what they did with the factory cable, is take this starter signal wire and run it in the loom all the way down. So number one, it stays protected, and number two, it's bunched up together. So then you don't ever have to worry about uh, running both cables and how am I going to protect this one. So I'll run this one into the jacket as much as I can, and then I'll uh, show you what that looks like. Okay, so I got it all fed into the loom now. So it should look something kind of like that. You want to leave yourself enough space so you can actually hook it up to the starter. One thing I'm considering, since I cut this rubber off, and there is a little bit of room in there, I might actually run it in with the 90 here, just to keep it extra protected, keep it from chafing. So, I don't know, maybe I'll do that real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, so that's exactly what I ended up doing. Just extra protection, keep it tight with the wire. Uh, I'm sure that should be plenty. If it's not, you know, I can always loosen it off, pull it through more, but should be plenty. And get that all figured out. So I'll go ahead and show you kind of how you, I finagled this guy. Just kind of, you just kind of got to force it a little bit, especially with the new copper like that. They they don't really like to bend. They kind of have a memory from sitting in the box. So hang on, it's hooking on something. Okay, I'll just have to fish it through. But you get the point. Just ram her through, get her home, and then tie it up. Okay, so to come back here real quick, I got it all in the truck. Can't really record any of this. It's pretty much just play with it, figure out how you want to do it, get it in there. Um, that's how I routed this side up. So starter solenoid wire down to the starter and then to the other battery. That's how all this is routed. Now, there's a reason I left all these zip ties loose, and that's because I want the cable to sit down here, and that's just how tight that needed to be to do that. Um... Got this end all together. I seem to be missing one of these terminals all of a sudden because for some reason nobody can just leave my stuff alone when I disappear for a couple days. You know, like I guess I could reuse that one. I don't really want to because it's trash, but Let's piss a guy off with that kind of shit, man. I'm telling you. Anyways, so then we got the negatives all put together as well. I did it that way just because reasons. Now, when you do put these terminals on, there is an up and a down. So you see how this side is just flat, and then this side has a bit of a taper to it. The taper goes down. Same with all these casting marks that you can see, those little circular marks from the casting, or however they poured these, pouring it into the mold, or whatever they did to make these guys. All but There should only be one on the top if you have this particular style, and then there's four on the bottom. And they are directional. If you look at the post of a battery, you can see why. Maybe not on the camera so much, but the post of the battery is also tapered. It is conical, sort of, so it gets fatter at the bottom and skinnier up to the top. Um, so, yeah, really nothing special to it. If you figured out how to take it all out, you can put it back together pretty easy. I'll, I'll show the end product once I find my missing terminal. I have no idea what would have happened to that. But, uh... Just a quick touch for the negative on this side you can't really see nothing in there battery's too low for the flashlight classic um, there's two spots where it's cable tied it is tied to the power steering pump and then somewhere into the block as well and then it threads into the block on this side once I get underneath I'll see if I can get a shot of it we're here from the future I was just putting the video together and I realized I forgot to mention something uh, when you look at these terminals they are also post-to-post uh, -post directional so this one has a P on it and this one has an N on it, positive, negative. 
So the negative ones, because on all batteries like this, the negative is always going to be a little bit smaller than the positive. So the negative side terminal actually won't fit onto the positive. So they, that does matter as well. Just want to throw that in quick. So unfortunately, there's really just not a lot of room to get the camera in while you're working. So this is just going to be a show and tell kind of video. But this is what the finished result looks like. This guy doesn't really fit with all three wires on there, at least the way I have it. I'm not going to change it because this is kind of the best way to do it. Charge cooler pipes back in. Super easy. You can figure that out yourself. But for the location of the negative on the driver's side, I can actually show it now. I got a, I got a different perspective on it now, so I can actually get under the truck. If you come under the front, get yourself underneath. This is probably the easiest place you're going to find a, you, or, uh, to get at it anyway. So you see the brand new loom going up there. Oh, how can I get the camera in here? There we go. So it just bolts up right there beside the, uh, beside the oil pan. And then same thing with the other side. You can see it's right there. Super easy to get the camera in here. I had a little uh, air dam thing here before, so got rid of it because it, it wasn't original and it was just all sorts of in bad shape. But yeah, that's that's where that guy goes. And then it mounts up onto the power steering pump, but I'm not gonna put a zip tie back there. That's it, it can just dangle. It's not gonna hit anything. Wire's too stiff, it's not like it's gonna get caught in a fan, but well actually, you know what? Maybe I might zip tie that. Yeah, okay, word of the wise, zip tie it, because it'll come up, it'll catch the power steering pump, and uh I doubt it would get hit in a belt, but you don't want to be chewing up a wire or chewing up a belt, but I'll do that off camera. So that's what your end result should look like. Before I tie that up, let's go ahead and fire it up here. See how much better it starts now. So that's been sitting for like two months. I've been waiting for cables and stuff to show up. Oh, way better. All right, there you go. That's how she's done.